We now go to our international correspondents, Giselle and Irene, reporting on the flood in Belize. Go ahead, Belize. Greetings, Global Coalition. I am Giselle. And I am Irene. And we are reporting from Calajo Community School, located in the jungles of Peru, in Central America. We have special reports from recent flooding here in our country. We will now go to our special reporters, Elmer and Abel, with a story on the flooding from our village. Now report to Angela Jofre, Elisa Omar Martinez, and my partner, Abel Alvarado. You can see behind us the water has been raised to a very high level. The farmers who had planted crops had their crops washed away by the rushing water. The water had washed almost all the soil where the farmers used to grow and it had uprooted many trees. This is the second time where this has happened and I hope it won't happen again. This is a house with have been surrounded with water for two days. Hi, I am Romario. You see this past month of October, over 20 inches of rain fell in Belize, causing major hur hurricane level flooding in most regions of Belize. When our Guatemalan neighbors receive rain, the water flows towards Belize, causing rivers to rise. Now we'll go to Giselle and Irene. Thanks to Romario and Damaris for that report. Thankfully, the rains have stopped and the rivers have gone down. And this is all from Gallagher of Belize. Do you like movies? Well, here's Jessica with the latest in entertainment. Hi, a new movie has just came out called High School Musical 3, Senior Year. Ooh, sounds exciting. The two high schoolers, Troy and Gabriella, want to be together, but will college drive them apart? Check out this new movie to find out what happens. This is a great movie that kids and teens love. The movie theater has been packed with kids waiting to see their favorite popular series. Go grab some popcorn and a soda and check out this new movie, High School Musical 3. Now back to you, Katie. Here's our on-the-spot reporter, Tim, reporting the scary news about an invasion of scarecrows. Ah! I hear there's an invasion of scarecrows attacking Bethlehem Middle School. I don't really see any. Mr. Warford, is it true that there's an invasion of scarecrows? Yeah, I guess you could say that. Uh, we built scarecrows outside of the school at the beginning of October. Are you sure there's no one being taken alive from the scarecrows? We've had no reports of any kidnappings at this time, no. Who made these evil scarecrows? Uh, the scarecrows actually aren't, aren't evil, but uh, they were put here in the building at the beginning of the school year to kind of uh, welcome the, the fall uh, festive season and students from art club and um, from the environmental club and helping hands and teachers from across the building got together and built the straw figures in the front of the building to decorate and to welcome people to the building. So they're going to take over the fall season. Is that true? Uh, they have taken over the fall season, yes. Let's find out what the scarecrows have to say about this. Wow, there are really scarecrows out here. How long have you been sitting here? No comment. Where are you going so soon? Oh, it's follow the leader. Mr. Scarecrow, why are you the only one with an orange head? Hello? Mr. Scarecrow, why are you dancing? You don't say. You don't say. The Scarecrow didn't say. This just in. The Scarecrows are perfectly safe. <laughs> Here's our Global Coalition reporter, Imran, with a story from India. This report is about an Indian culture and tradition. To go there, we have to go across the seven seas. Every day, 
is a festival in this country of social diversity. But the true spirit of each festival comes forth only when all the people are different come together to celebrate. This is true for the country, for all the countries, not only India. You might have read about the great Indian epic Ramayana. The two most important festivals associated with it are Dussehra and Diwali. Dussehra is celebrated to mark the victory of Lord Rama over the demon king Ravana. This festival is celebrated by burning effigies of Ravana. It marks the victory of good over evil. Diwali marks the returning of Lord Rama to Ayodhya after an exile of 14 years. People light dais and candles to celebrate this festival of light. They exchange gifts with all near and dear ones. Each festival has a different legend associated with it, but each one brings people closer so that you know each other. People learn and understand beliefs, and most importantly, break all boundaries so as to promote global peace. By the way, I would like to tell you that Karan is not only Mani's partner, but they're twin brothers too. Shocking. And now we go to our international correspondents, Eugenia and Katya, with a report on photography from Zlatowst, Russia. Go ahead, Eugenia. Hello, we are Eugenia and Katya. We want to tell you the story about Holy Russia. The prevalent exhibition of new photographs that have been displayed for free admission in the Zlatowst Art Hall for two weeks. Nothing unusual except for the fact that these color photographs had been taken in 1909-1915 by the Russian scientist and photographer Sergei prokutin -Gorsky. The Russian Tsar Nicholas II, who was fond of photography himself, enabled and encouraged this photographic expedition. The subjects ranged from the medieval churches and monasteries of old Russia to the railroads and factories to the daily life and work of Russia's diverse population. The photographs offer for us a vivid portrait of the Russian Empire on the eve of World War I and the coming Russian Revolution. Sergei prokutin gorsky left Russia as did thousands of dissidents in 1918, and he could take those nearly 2,000 photo plates along with him. Later on, his archive happened to find shelter and have been kept safe since then in the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. The pictures are told about nowadays as unique by right. Each of them is so valuable that the photograph of three generations, which shows the worker family of Zlatov's post in traditional clothing, was an honorable gift presented to, the pre to President Gorbachev by President Reagan in 1990. The Internet has made it possible for a team of young enthusiasts from the neighboring town of Mias to give a great chance to these century-old photographs to come back and to share the pleasure of belonging to the history with us. Also, we appreciate the efforts of the experts of the local law museum and the art hall who have contributed to the success of this exhibition. For us, the photo exhibition Holy Russia is ex exclusive because we can see in these amazing colorful pictures people and places in quite different parts of our homeland as they looked a century ago. This exhibition of century-old Russian color photographs at the Zlatost Art Hall in the Euros with original plates stored in the library of the U.S. Congress is another evidence that everyone can do his share for breaking down the barriers which keep people worldwide from exchanging ideas and cultural values. That was our news story from Zlatost, Russia, for you who watched the Global Coalition News. Goodbye. See you next time. Bye. And now let's hear from our world economics expert, Olivia, with our Did You Know segment. Did you know that the literacy rate in Sweden is 99%, whereas in Brazil it's 88.6%? And did you know that the population in China is 1,330,044,544, whereas in Finland it's 5,244,749? And the internet users in Japan is 800.11 million, whereas in Kenya it's only 3 million. And the GDP per capita in Jordan is 4,700, but in Peru it's 7,600. Back to you, Katie. And here's Katie reporting on sports. Would you like to run a professional soccer player? As crazy as it sounds, that's what's happening. During the offseason, professional soccer players are being loaned to foreign teams. David Beckham was one of the first to start his practice. Teams all over the world are, be are training players. For the players, it means being able to keep playing and making more money. For the teams, it means getting some excellent players. 
but with salaries reaching as high as $10 million that Villarreal of Spain paid for teenage forward Jose Altidore, I don't think that I will be renting a soccer player anytime soon. Now we go to our on-the-spot reporter, Maddie, reporting live in the Bethlehem Central lunchroom. We're here at the Bethlehem Central Middle School's cafeteria to find out what kids usually have to eat for lunch. These are all the kids waiting to get their lunch. They usually get whatever they are serving the first choice, but they also serve, like, sandwiches. What are you getting today? Um, I'm getting a salad. What was yesterday? I got a sandwich. Sandwiches and subs seem to be the top meal for this week. I'm eating a bagel with cream cheese. Is that what you get to get in? No, not usually. I drink salami. I always drink water because it's very healthy. hundred calories. What do you usually drink? A sandwich, a water bottle, and a Doritos. Well, it looks like out of all of these people, sandwiches is the top. Back to you, Phil. That's it for today. Thanks for watching the Global Coalition News.